Thanks for tuning in as we continue in our series, I Didn't Know That Was in the Bible, Part 2. Last summer, we did Part 1 of this series. We did a show on Israeli master spy, Eli Cohen. Today, we will discuss Israel's greatest military hero, Lieutenant Colonel Yoni Netanyahu, who happens to also be the brother of the sitting prime minister. In a poll taken in 2005, Yoni Netanyahu was voted the 13th greatest Israeli of all time. He was the commander of the special ops unit that invaded Entebbe Airport by night to save more than 100 hostages in 1976. He was the only Israeli killed in the raid. The lead airport plane pilot Joshua Shawnee said this, he seemed like a hero out of our ancient past. Welcome to Understanding the End of the Age with Teresa Garcia. The world has entered into a time of paradigm shift when everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Signs and wonders, miracles and healings attest to this truth. It is the time of the coming of the Lord. Join Teresa as we discuss how to prepare our hearts and loved ones in understanding the end of the age. I'm Teresa Garcia. Thanks for joining me again this week as we continue in our series entitled, I Didn't Know That Was in the Bible, Part 2. Today we are going to discuss Israeli military heroes, past and future, as we make this point. When it comes to war... God has a side. God is always on the side of justice and righteousness and honor. And God watches over his word to perform it. Heavenly Father, we know it says in your word that one more time, the world will come against Israel and against Jerusalem. And we know that they would be actually annihilated if you didn't come, their Messiah, to rescue them but we know that you will come and that you will set up your millennial kingdom. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we actually have three purposes of today's show. First of all, we're going to look at Israeli military heroes going back to the times of Antiochus Epiphanes and forward to the tribulation. And then we're going to discuss a specific incident, namely the raid on Entebbe Airport in 1976. Actually, it was on our bicentennial, the 4th of July, uh, 1976. An airplane was hijacked by the Palestinian and German terrorists, and the Israelis went in and rescued the hostages. Then our third purpose is to honor Lieutenant Colonel Yoni Netanyahu, the hero of the Entebbe raid. And so we're going to begin by looking at the heroes in the days of the evil Antiochus Epiphanes, remember he ruled Israel from 175 to 164 BC. He banned circumcision, murdered uh, observant Jews, defiled the Holy of Holies, slaughtered a pig on the altar, and was uh, ultimately defeated then by a group of men who rallied under a great warrior named Judas Maccabee. Daniel wrote about him uh, 400 years before he came on the scene as prophecy. Listen to what Daniel says in chapter 11. And forces shall be mustered by him, Antiochus Epiphanes, and they shall defile the sanctuary fortress. Then they shall take away the daily sacrifices and place there the abomination of desolation. That was a statue of Jupiter. Those who do wickedly against the covenant, meaning the Mosaic law, he shall corrupt with flattery. But the people who know their God, Jewish heroes, shall be strong and carry out great exploits. And so in 164 BC, 
Judas Maccabee and his brothers and a mighty band of men uh, went again the more, against the more powerful Antiochus Epiphanes. And even though they were outnumbered, they, they overthrew him. There is a prophecy about them in Zechariah also, Zechariah 9.13, where it says, For I have bent Judah, meaning the two southern tribes, my bow, and fitted the bow with Ephraim, the ten northern tribes, and raised up your sons, O Zion, against your sons, O Greece, and made you like the sword of a mighty man. Now that is a very interesting prophecy because there are two fulfillments. One fulfillment in the times of Antiochus Epiphanes and another fulfillment when the Jews rally against the Antichrist, also called a son of Greece, uh, during the tribulation. Let's listen to David Barron explain that. The prophecy cannot be altogether restricted to the Maccabean struggle with the Syrian Greeks in 164 BC. No. Zion and Greece are in this prophecy of Zechariah opposed to one another as the city of God and the city of the world. And the defeat of Antiochus Epiphanes and his successors at the hands of comparative handfuls of despised Jews, to which this passage may primarily refer, foreshadows the final conflict with world power and the judgment to be inflicted on the confederated armies who shall be gathered against Jerusalem, not only directly by the hand of God, but also by who? The hand of Israel, who shall then be made strong in Jehovah. Let's look at one more verse on the brave Israeli military during the tribulation. In that day, the Lord will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The one who is feeble among them in that day shall be like David, and the house of David shall be like God, like the angel of the Lord before them. So there are going to be a lot of heroic military maneuvers in the end time. Theodore Herzl, the father of the modern state of history, Israel actually prophesied in his book, The Jewish State, let's listen, he says that a new race of Maccabeans would arise once the Jews re-entered history as a nation. So now let's talk about the events of the summer of 1976. On 27 June, an Air France plane with 248 passengers was hijacked by members of the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine and the German Revolutionary Cells and flown to Entebbe, the main airport of Uganda. The local government supported the hijackers and dictator Idi Amin personally welcomed them. The hijackers separated the Israelis and Jews from the larger group and forced them into another room. That afternoon, 47 non-Israeli hostages were released. The next day, 101 more non-Israeli hostages were allowed to leave on board an Air France aircraft. More than 100 Israeli and Jewish passengers, along with the non-Jewish pilot, Captain Bakos, remained as hostages and were threatened with death. And so when the plane was first hijacked on Sunday afternoon, that was a deplorable situation. But it was after the non-Jewish hostages were released that desperation set in. Thursday morning in Israel, the headline was one word, Selexia. It means selection, selecting Jews only to be held and abused. No Gentile can appreciate 
the meaning of the word selexia. Listen to Stevenson in 90 Minutes at Entebbe. That dreadful word selexia, the selection of Jews, appeared in Thursday's headline. This is what the Nazis did in World War II. Selexia was the word repeated as the hijackers released the hostages, the other ones, from Uganda. All who remained in terrorist hands were the Jews and the Air France crew whose captain refused to leave and persuaded his French colleagues that they too must remain to witness whatever happened to the Jews. Let's listen now uh, to a little information about the captain. Michel Bacos was captain of the Air France Flight 139 when the plane was hijacked on June 27, 1976 by Palestinian and German terrorists. The terrorists freed the 148 non-Jewish passengers and offered to release Bakos and his crew, but Bakos refused to leave the plane and the remaining Jewish passengers, saying it was his duty to stay with them until the end, no matter what happens, and that he would not leave any of them. The captives were freed in an Israeli commando raid known as Operation Thunderbolt, and Bakos was dazed in the attack. After the raid, Bakos was asked if he ever thought the Israeli army would fly thousands of kilometers to rescue them. Looking at the cameras, he said, who else? In 1976, Bakos was awarded the National Order of the Legion of Honor, the highest decoration in France. So now let's give a detailed look at the raid. Prime Minister Rabin convened his cabinet on Sunday afternoon when he heard of the hijacking. In the early hours, they thought maybe the plane would come to Israel, but it refueled in Benghazi and then flew to the heart of Africa at Entebbe Airport. After three days of insisting that he would not negotiate with uh, the hijackers, Prime Minister Rabin initiated a two-track program. One, initiate with the hijackers, and two, prepare an assault plan. And by the way, all week long, the American news media kept reporting there is no possibility of a military rescue because of the great distance, 2,500 miles. Yoni Netanyahu, who was the commander of the Special Ops Force, called in uh, Israel the unit, which is their most elite troops, was in the Sinai on a mission so secret that even today they won't say what he was doing there. But anyway, he flew back. He got back to Tel Aviv on Thursday. They had several plans in mind. The first one was to drop rubber rafts uh, and commandos on Lake Victoria, but it's crocodile infested. The second plan was to send the whole army in and take over the whole airport. But in the end, they settled on a limited plan of action. Go in, kill the hijackers, get the hostages, and get out. Prime Minister Rabi knew his government would fall if the raid was not a success. The Israelis flew to Entebbe in four C-130 Hercules aircrafts. Yoni Netanyahu, the commander, was in Hercules I. It carried a black Mercedes and two Land Rovers with the assault team. The assault team also dressed in Ugandan uniforms, hoping to confuse the hijackers. Let's listen. The Israeli forces landed at Entebbe at 2300 Israeli time with their cargo bay doors already open. A black Mercedes that looked like President Idi Amin's vehicle and Land Rovers that usually accompanied Amin's Mercedes were brought along. The Israelis hoped they could use them to bypass security checkpoints. When the C-130s landed, 
Israeli assault team members drove the vehicles to the terminal building in the same fashion as Amin. As they approached the terminal, two Ugandan sentries ordered the vehicles to stop. The commandos shot the sentries using silenced pistols, but did not kill them. As they pulled away, however, an Israeli commando in one of the following Land Rovers killed them with an unsuppressed rifle. Fearing the hijackers would be alerted prematurely, the assault team quickly approached the terminal. Now let's take a look at a photo from 1994, but it shows us a Hercules airplane and the airport. Here we see a C-130 Hercules airplane in front of the old Entebbe airport. The building is still pockmarked by the bullets sprayed toward the Ugandan soldiers who were shooting at the Israelis from the tower. Continuing in our story, the other three Hercules planes landed, two more with more troops, and one was a hospital plane. The Israelis sprang from their vehicles and burst toward the terminal. The hostages were in the main hall of the airport building, directly adjacent to the runway. Entering the terminal, the commando shouted through a megaphone, Stay down, stay down, we are Israeli soldiers, in both Hebrew and English. Jean-Jacques Mamoni, a 19-year-old French immigrant to Israel, stood up and was killed when Israeli company commander Muki Betzer and another soldier mistook him for a hijacker and fired at him. At one point, an Israeli commando called out in Hebrew, where are the rest of them, referring to the hijackers, the hostages pointed to a connecting door of the airport's main hall into which the commandos threw several hand grenades. Then they entered the room and shot dead the three remaining hijackers, ending the assault. Listen to another version by Simon Dunstan. He says it like this. This is the incredible story of how the Israeli special forces defied radar for over 2,000 miles, masqueraded as a tyrant in a Mercedes, and captured uniforms, and defeated an army in brutal combat in a triumph of sheer nerve. And so after the raid, then, there were many movies made about it, including Victory at Entebbe, starring Burt Lancaster and Elizabeth Taylor, Raid on Entebbe, starring Charles Bronson, and Operation Thunderbolt. There were also um, many uh, documentaries, The Rise and Fall of Idi Amin, there was an arcade game called Operation Thunderbolt. And also, uh, we are making this available for those who would like it. This DVD, Follow Me, the Yoni Netanyahu story, uh, that got Best of the Fest at two festivals and Best Documentary at two more. Featuring three Israeli prime ministers, including his brother Benjamin uh, and Ehud Barak and Shimon Perez. Also, actual audio from the Entebbe raid and a rare portrait of Israel's greatest hero. By the way, it also was on a, um, an episode of The Simpsons in which the Israeli tour guide offers Marge an Uzi submarine machine gun and says, You can hold my gun. I used it at Entebbe. The government of Uganda later convened a session of the UN Security Council to seek condemnation of the Israeli raid as a violation of Ugandan sovereignty. The Security Council ultimately declined to pass any resolution on the matter, condemning neither Israel nor Uganda. Next, let's talk about Yoni Netanyahu. He was, by all accounts, a very unique person, very handsome, very charismatic. He was president of his student council in high school, straight-A student, 
top 10% at Harvard, but more than anything else, he was a man who loved his country, Israel. And so um, his, uh, after his death, his brothers published his letters, and you could see his love, almost adoration for the land of Israel. His parents took their three boys to America when they were in high school, but on his 18th birthday, he returned to Israel to serve in the military and then make it his career. Listen to his letter to his brother, Benjamin. We're preparing for war, and it's hard to know what to expect. What I'm positive of is there will be a next round and others after that. But I would rather opt for living here in continual battle than for becoming part of the wandering Jewish people. As I don't intend to tell my grandchildren about the Jewish state in the 20th century as a mere brief and transient episode in thousands of years of wandering, I intend to hold on here with all my might. Now let's take a look at Yoni Netanyahu, this is the last picture taken of him. By the way, Yoni is translated Johnny in English. Hebrew does not have the J sound. After his death, Operation Thunderbolt was renamed Operation Jonathan in his honor. Here is the story of his death from his own website, presumably put up by his family. Another soldier tells the story. I looked to my left, says Shlomo, because I wanted to see where I was supposed to go in. At that stage, I saw Yoni, and I think that's when he got hit because I saw him make a half a turn with his face contorted, sinking down a little bit with his knees bent. Someone shouted that Yoni was hit, but the men of the force continued in their tasks following Yoni's orders not to take care of the wounded until the hostages were freed. Each of them realized that time was of the essence, as it would have taken only seconds for the terrorists, once they fully realized what was going on, to have sprayed automatic fire on the huddled hostages. Now let's take a look at a permanent plaque at the Entebbe Airport in Uganda. On this date, an Israeli military force rescued more than 100 hostages held here at gunpoint in a daring rescue mission. Four military planes carrying Israeli commandos landed at midnight after an eight-hour flight from Israel. Within minutes, the commandos stormed the old terminal fighting both the terrorists and soldiers, acting under the orders of the brutal dictator Idi Amin, and freed the hostages. During the brief battle, the commander of the rescue force at the old terminal, Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Netanyahu, lost his life, as did three of the hostages, Jean-Jacques Mamoni, Ida Borovitz, and Pasco Cohen. A fourth hostage, Dora Block, who was recuperating at a hospital in Kampala, was brutally executed the following day on the orders of Amin. The mission was renamed by Israel's government, Operation Jonathan, in order, honor of the brave commander who lost his life. The rescue of Antebi will always remain a shining example of the fight against terrorism and a symbol of man's courage in resisting brutality and evil. Unfortunately, brutality and evil will continue until the end of the tribulation. Let's end with some good news. The millennial reign, thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days, 10 men from every language of the nations shall grasp the sleeve of a Jewish man saying, let us go with you for we have heard that God is with you. God is with the Jews, and if we're smart, we are too. We will be right back. 
Christians today are asking this question, what will be the signs of his coming? In this series, Teresa gives a detailed answer, including what is the significance of the upcoming four blood moons and four solar eclipses? Which Old Testament prophecies are currently being fulfilled? When is the next Shemitah year and what is its significance? What is meant by the spirit of Antichrist? And what biblical passages speak to the probability of a pre-tribulation rapture? All this and more in Teresa's series, What Will Be the Signs of His Coming? To order the series, What Will Be the Signs of His Coming? which includes an eight-part DVD series, the notebook with copies of the charts used on the screen, and Joyce Meyer's book, Filled with the Spirit, send $34 to Teresa Garcia Ministry, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236, or call 618 281 3291. We take Visa and MasterCard at 618-281-3291 or order online at TeresaGarciaMinistry.com. If you would also like a copy of Teresa's book from the Hidden Final Edition for only $12, $4 off the regular price, send $46 to Teresa Garcia Ministry, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236 or call 618-281-3291. 3291 or order online at teresagarciaministry.com and thank you for including your tax deductible donation when you order types of the antichrist the rise and fall of adolf hitler future judgment in new york the gap theory the 200 million man army israel's greatest military hero yoni netanyahu in 2013, Teresa recorded part one of I Didn't Know That Was in the Bible. The series was so popular that she chose nine new topics this year that every Christian needs to delve into and understand. Teresa's exciting nine-part DVD series, I Didn't Know That Was in the Bible, part two is now available and filled with information on a large variety of subjects. I Didn't Know That Was in the Bible, part two, includes the book The Wake Up Call, the story of Oral Roberts' vision of judgment in New York, as well as a notebook with copies of the charts used on the screen. To purchase I Didn't Know That Was in the Bible, part two, send $41 to Teresa Garcia Ministry, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236, or call 618-281-3291, or order online at TeresaGarciaMinistry.com. To include a copy of the award-winning documentary, Follow Me, about Israeli military hero Yoni Netanyahu for only $14, send $55 to Teresa Garcia Ministry, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236, or call 618-281-3291, or order online at TeresaGarciaMinistry.com. We will see you next week. God bless you. Thank you for watching Understanding the End of the Age with Teresa Garcia. You may contact us at Teresa Garcia Ministry, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236. Or call 618-281-3291. Or visit us online at TeresaGarciaMinistry.com. You may also find us on Facebook and Roku at Teresa Garcia Ministry. For prayer requests, call 618-281-3291 or mail them to us at Teresa Garcia, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236. Be sure to join us again next week for Understanding the End of the Age with Teresa Garcia.